Good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew. Is it not a beautiful day outside? It's a little warm, but it's a beautiful day outside, right? Spring has sprung, right? Let's spring up out of our chair this morning and let's rise and sing. As for me and my house, let's praise the Lord this morning. Open your hearts and minds for worship today. Your love, oh Lord, is the strength to my soul. Hope for tomorrow, it won't let go. Your presence is the joy of my life. To you, I lift my eyes. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Your word alone, a lamp to my feet, light to my path as you're leading me. Your ways, oh Lord, are higher than mine. To you I lift my Write it on every wall, sing it in every room, yeah. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room, yeah. Open up every door. forevermore as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we serve the Lord Sing it. as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will sing of your love forevermore as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we'll serve the Lord Every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room. Good morning, please be seated. A few announcements for Pastor Dave's ordination and installation service. We have extra cards back on the welcome table. We had put them in the bulletin last week, but in case you don't have them and need them, they are on the welcome table. We're trying to get numbers of folks to come to that lunch. So this is on June 19th. It's a combined service, and we're going to have the service and then have a luncheon after that. On June 12th is our voters meeting, which is also a combined service. So hopefully you can join us for that as well. And we'll be having a town hall meeting on June 2nd to, before the uh, voters meeting. That's a Thursday. It's June 2nd. So on your card it says the 12th, but it really is the 2nd, just to let you know. And we're also doing a directory. Remember for a number of weeks we had the old directory out there for you to update. We want to be able to put pictures with uh, each of the names and addresses. And we're going to be taking those internally. So we'll be having times in between the services to get your picture taken. It's going to be done by folks here at St. Matthew, so nobody's selling you anything. We just want to get nice pictures on so people know who different people are. So hopefully you'll take part in that as well. Um, so one of the things that, if you remember last fall, Rose and I went 
to Italy and harvested olives and made olive oil. And she took a master gardener's class this spring. And for the final project that she had to do, had to be about some topic and growing something. And she did it on olive oil. And if she brought it in. If you'd like to taste some of the different olive oil that we harvested, it's back there. And you can compare and all that. And it talks about olive trees. So just out of interest, I told her to go ahead and bring it in because she had extra and I thought you might find that kind of fascinating. And for those that play pickleball, there's no pickleball on Wednesday. Let's stand and continue with our liturgy. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Today we gather to hear God's word, honor him with praise, seek him in prayer, and receive the body and blood of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. But we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Let us ask our Heavenly Father for forgiveness for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us for all that we have done in the past, and for not loving others as you have commanded. Grant us your grace and lead us to serve you and to love others as you love us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thanks be to God. The head that once was crowned with thorns Is crowned with glory now The Savior knelt to wash our feet Now at His feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king Fear that held us now gives way To him who is our peace His final breath upon the cross Is now alive in me Sing your name Cause your name, your name is victory Two 
soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our god has robbed the grave our god has robbed the Please be seated. At the Earn Kevin. God has graced you with the gift of Adelie. Today, God's creative saving work continues in her life with the promise of forgiveness, life, and salvation that comes in the power of baptism and the assurance of God's everlasting love for her in Christ. From God's word, we learn that we are all conceived and born sinful and in need of forgiveness. The Father of all mercy and grace sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It is our Savior that looked at little ones such as these and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And it was Jesus who said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I command you. Adelie, nay. I had the sign of the cross on your head and on your heart to show that you are marked and redeemed by Christ, the crucified. So everyone here in the congregation and the family has a responsibility for the spiritual welfare of this child. And so I ask you, therefore, of members and friends of St. Matthew, will you care for this child through your prayer and through the ongoing ministries of our congregation? If so, answer with God's help. Heather and Kevin, in presenting Adelie for holy baptism, you are promising to raise her in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. I therefore ask you, will you remind her often of the blessings she has received in baptism? And will you strive in all things to give witness to and model the Christian faith and life as parents? If so, answer, we will with God's help. We will with God's help. And Paul and Rachel, you have been chosen to serve as baptismal sponsors for this child. I therefore ask you, Will you remember her in your prayers, and will you put her often in mind of her baptism, and will you offer this child your counsel and aid so that she continues to be raised within the Christian church and may grow up to lead a godly life? If so, answer, we will with God's help. And the four of you speaking on behalf of Adam. Do you renounce the devil and all of his works and all of his ways? If so, answer, I do renounce them. I do renounce them. And together we all... Confess our faith in the words of the baptismal covenant, the definition of who God is in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Adelie. She has such a big smile. Adelie, I baptize you. Whoops. What are you looking at over there? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, the newest member of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. There you go. May the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth in water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you for grace and life eternal. And receive this burning light, the symbol that you have received the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'll ask uh, one of the, would you hold on to that? Or our Godfather there, one of you? That'd be great. And that with this flame, a reminder of the Holy Spirit, as you live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into his kingdom, that kingdom which will have no end. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank you and praise you for graciously preserving and enlarging your family and have granted this child new birth and holy baptism and made her a member of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an heir of the heavenly kingdom. And we humbly implore you that she would now become your child, that Adelie in her baptismal grace would rise up in the good pleasure that she may grow to lead a godly life, the praise and honor of your holy name with all the saints in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And then if we can have you... Put the dove on the banner over there. There's buttons you can just hang it on over there. And the dove symbolizes the Holy Spirit. All right. Thank you very much. And we continue with the prayer of the day. Oh God, the giver of all that is good, nourish us with your word so that we may love one another and the world you have made. Renew our hearts to seek the needs of others above ourselves, to encourage, not condemn, and to be faithful witnesses of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear from God's word from a reading from Acts 15. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch, and they were teaching the believers that unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders met together to resolve this issue. And after much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. My friends, you know that God decided long ago to let me be one of your group to preach the good news to the Gentiles so that they would hear and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved just as they are. When they finished, James spoke up. Friends, he said, listen to me. Simon has described to us how God first intervened to choose a people for his name from the Gentiles. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this as it is written. Afterward, I will return and restore the fallen house of David, and I will rebuild its ruins and restore it, so that the rest of humanity might see the Lord, including the Gentiles. All those I have called to be mine, the Lord has spoken. He has made these known to us from long ago. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Then the apostles and elders, together with the whole church in Jerusalem, chose delegates, and they sent them to Antioch of Syria with Paul and Barnabas to report on this discussion. The men chosen were two of the church leaders, Judas, called Barasabas, and Silas, 
and with them they sent along the letter. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, we have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agree to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, you have risked, who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from the food sacrificed to idols, from blood, and from meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. And then our second reading is further on in the book of Acts as Paul is going on one of his missionary journeys. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got up at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Torres, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her house. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, as she persuaded us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. take what's broken and make it whole again well here's the pieces of my heart what can you do with them I can't hold them all together anymore so I
Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, was the Pool of Bethesda, with five covered porches. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One of the men lying there had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the man replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. And the day on which this took place was a Sabbath. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be and remain with you all. Amen. Would you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, as I considered our lessons of the lectionary for today, as we continue actually through the Easter season, we are still in that season of Easter, appropriate anyway as Easter people, especially on a special occasion like this with Adelie, as we celebrate the new life in Christ. And we think about how the kingdom of God has grown and grown from those early days there of our Lord's ascension and Pentecost and then all the way through the disciples proclaiming the good news and we heard there about how going forth to Antioch and then to Asia Minor then uh, Lydia the first convert in Europe there in our second reading and all the way to Adelaide right now and that line all the way from Christ and the Apostles and an heir of everlasting life and there you see the power 
and the beauty and the joy of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, the fact is, as I looked at those lessons and you think about the challenges that were before them in first century Palestine in those days, you might wonder why our Lord chose such a time and place in which to be starting his church. I mean, the prospects could look pretty grim. And it, I was thinking the very idea of succeeding at this, humanly speaking, I was thinking it was like opening an ice-making factory in the middle of Death Valley. It wouldn't take much for all of your work to disappear like that. And so there were people in the early church who were ready to help God out. They were going to protect the church. They will take charge so God doesn't have to worry about it. Would anything like that ever happen today? Well, we'll see. But that was the situation after Pentecost. There was such an amazing growth, actually, of the church, as we see illustrated in those lessons. And these disciples, things were really changing after the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles there at Pentecost. These disciples, who had been so timid and afraid before, now were preaching the gospel with great boldness. And there had been a change, too, in how they had been so easily falling into arguments and factions, and now they were unified in a powerful way. And hundreds and thousands of people were coming to the Lord Jesus Christ daily. The church was growing. And in the middle of that, then, you had a group of people, particularly a group of people that had been in charge of so much of the worship in the temple and have been so dedicated to the old covenant worship and sacrifices and the like. And they felt, they believed now that Jesus was indeed the Savior, the Messiah, but they felt that they could impose the old rules as in the past. In fact, they feel, felt they needed to. And by so doing, they would protect the church from getting out of hand. I mean, after all, you would be getting all sorts of people coming into this church. Gentiles, goyim, oive. What are they doing here? They might bring in a certain confusion. Maybe some impurity with all of the kosher laws. And certainly they might bring in some bad Gentile habits. So, they were determined to make sure that they would make sure those Old Testament rules would still be in effect. And effectively, you would have to become Jewish in order then to become Christian. And then you would sort of winnow out those that maybe weren't too serious about following them. You know, it's interesting how human beings can be and how they regard the church of the living God. And I submit to you that it's not over from the first century exactly. That we can still find evidences of that amongst human beings, sometimes with the best of intentions, sometimes with the worst of intentions, but somehow out of a lack of faith that our Lord himself knows how to grow his church, sustain his church, and have his church thrive. You know, as I was thinking about all these things, I remembered a particularly powerful illustration of that that I remembered from a youth gathering that I was one of the counselors at some years ago. We had a group here from St. Matthew and we had gone to this particular gathering. We, there were a number of them we'd gone to through the years. This one was one in San Antonio, Texas, my beloved old Texas. They're in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. And there were 26,000 kids there at that time. And it was a wonderful event. And as I remember, <clears throat> one of the most things that st stood out was a particular drama that was used as a particular part of this whole youth gathering. The gathering lasted for about a week. 
and there are all sorts of events and all sorts of music groups and all sorts of speakers and the group would break up into other groups to go out and do servant events throughout the city and so on. But in the morning there would be a mass event at the Alamo Dome and in the evening there would be a worship and mass event in the Alamo Dome as well. And in the middle of that big arena, they would have these various musicians and these performers, and there was an ongoing drama that was being acted out by a group of actors, young teenagers, boys and girls, young men, young women, and it would be visible there, but also even more clearly visible on the vast screens there of the stadium. And it was as if this group of actors was a youth group and like all the other groups that had assembled there. And after a while, it became clear as this one leader there of the group, the president of their little youth group and so on, I think his name was Pete. And we thought of then St. Peter and so forth. And these, it became clear that in the modern American idiom, this was portrayed before us. These young men, young women were like the apostles of the first century and those saints long ago. Only it was all being acted out in a modern scenario, contemporary scenario. What I particularly remember, and there were a number of memorable things, and one looked forward to each of the segments of these every morning, every evening through that week as their stories developed. There were a number of sub-themes going on with that. One I remember that was powerful to me was how the leaders in this whole group were planning an event. I can't quite remember what it was, a social event. And as they were planning it, as would happen throughout these uh, conversations, a Christ-like figure would appear on the stage with them, advising them as they prayed and as they discussed and talked. This event they were planning was some big social event and they got to talking about one particular girl that just was not particularly popular and didn't really fit in. And after a while, they were deciding that maybe she really shouldn't be included in this. Well, this Christ-like figure had been giving advice, but each time it was getting a little strange. Some of the things that were said just seemed a little off Culture, a little askew from what I would think as a pastor and a lot of the other people there would have thought should be said. And then this particular moment happened and the Christ-like figure said to the group, well, that makes sense and I think you should just go right ahead. After all, she doesn't really fit in. And it would be not fair to her to make her be a part of something where she really just doesn't belong. So you just go ahead and keep this the more exclusive thing you had planned for yourselves and your friends. And I could sense a very uncomfortable feeling and a murmur starting to go around 26,000 young people and their counselors and the various people that were present. And I can still see right in front of me was a girl 14, 15 years old and she turned to the man next to her, I guess her youth counselor or a pastor and she said, that's not right, is it? And the man looked and said, no. And you could see everybody else was thinking, I thought all these other pastors and youth counselors, we were probably all thinking, well, we're going to have to start writing some letters to the planning commission of the synod and say, you have veered into some very weird theology here. And just as that was all going about, well, I guess you could call that a real gotcha moment. They had pulled it over, uh, the wool over on our eyes, on not just the kids, but all the counselors and everybody, because at that moment, we realized this Christ-like figure was an imposter, a demon trying to look as Jesus. And before long, the real Jesus figure, an actor portraying that, appears on the scene and starts setting things right, and especially then telling this demonic fooling presence to get lost, get behind me, Satan, to the thunderous cheers and applause of 26,000 kids. It was quite a moment. 
and something I still remember to this day. As it was made clear, a lesson in the idea of the anti-Christian, anti-Christ movement that was there that trying to fool these kids, but the true Christ showed them the truth and the way. I thought it was interesting how they portrayed that as well with these actors. They were two young men. In fact, they looked very similar in their portrayal of Christ with the longer hair and beard and so on. In fact, they were so much alike, very fine looking young men. I almost kind of suspected, I never checked to prove it, that they were, might have been twins. But they had a slightly different impression as you would look at them. The first imposter Christ was, they were both wearing modern day clothes, but all in white. But the one who was the imposter, everything was very much um, uh, the newest, latest type of clothing. He had an earring in his ear, which was fine, but uh, that and some sequins, I think, on the buttons, whatever, the camera could catch and he was gleaming and sparkling. You get this picture in your mind. And his hair was perfectly combed and cut and styled, and the beard was perfectly trimmed. When the real Christ appears on the scene, he's similarly dressed, looks very similar to this other fellow. Like I said, I almost thought he was a twin, but his clothing also white, but also very more rough hewn and rugged looking and like he's been working hard all day and his uh, long hair is a little more rumpled and his beard is not trimmed and yet you get this distinct feeling right away that this is authentic, this is genuine. And I thought immediately of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, where St. Paul tells the Corinthians and us, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Do not be surprised, he adds, if the servants of Satan masquerade as servants of righteousness. Wow, what a powerful image before us. And what they were acting out before us is how our Lord Jesus Christ, at the heart of this was a distinction, as we've been following in this series that we have been doing since Easter, about turning a 180 degree turn in our lives. Jesus had already accomplished the 180 degree turn that was needed, and he is ready, willing, and certainly able to impart that to his people and anxious to do so. That 180 that he did on death and that hell-bent direction of the human race he has transformed into a new direction for all those who will heed the call. Those lessons today reflect that struggle that was going on in the first days of the early church. And I somewhat reversed the order from the lectionary by those two passages from Acts to point out the first one that you heard was commonly called the Council at Jerusalem, where those people were trying to say, you can't let these people come in here. They're not one of us. They don't belong in this new pristine church that we want to keep exactly in the way we want it to be. But that those disciples prevailed in the power of the Spirit as St. Paul spoke and St. Peter spoke, St. James and their co-workers like Barnabas and Silas and they were making clear what they had been learning. St. Peter said it was clear when he was called to the house of Cornelius that they were being called to the Gentiles too. And Paul and Barnabas were saying all that was happening in their work at Antioch, it was clear that God wanted them to be reaching out to all nations. And as they did so, they were reminding them, remember, that old law didn't save you and me either. It was always faith. Faith in our Lord that saved. That faith in him and his plan. As those actors were on that stage, in a very real way, they were portraying what was happening there. That second lesson that I included in that order shows the outward missionary movement of Paul and the others, and we see them going on into Antioch, Asia Minor, and this passage on into Europe. Lydia, the first convert in Europe, and the church was growing by leaps and bounds, not held back by these restrictions that some would put upon it. Those people 
at that time were trying to not just make a 180 degree turn for the church, but a 360 degree turn for the church. They wanted it to be the old way. They wanted it to be the old direction. They wanted it to be the old sacrifices and the old covenant. And the Holy Spirit was saying through his apostles, nothing doing. By grace you are saved and you are called now to a new life. He's saying these requirements of the kosher laws and circumcision requirements were not going to fill the membership classes. And these people would have said, that's exactly right, that's what we don't want. But the Holy Spirit said, well, that's exactly what we want. And that's what's going to happen. And that's continued on for generation after generation for every man and woman and child as we are called by that same Holy Spirit into that same salvation in Christ. At the heart of it all, if I may submit to you, is the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That personal relationship that he wants so much with you, and the only thing that's the barrier is not the rules or restrictions or arrogant people, but rather just your own hesitation and refusal. If you will let him, the Holy Spirit will enter into you. He has entered into the, through baptism for Adelaide, and it's a new life of power and joy in Christ. And may I be blunt, you need to know and be familiar with the real Christ so that Satan will not trick you. You need to have that personal relationship. You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the real Christ, so you can tell the imposters and those who do not have the right, true message of our Lord. And so those who in their smug self-righteousness would put a barrier around things, the Holy Spirit wants us to know what Adelaide knows right now, and she could preach the sermon, that we have that new life that she has. And we now, as God's people, share that. There are people in this world that would like to restrict that, and I know myself, when one is made to be, feel unwelcome in a church, being told, you're not church material anymore. We really don't want you around. But thanks be to God, Jesus Christ never said that to me. And thanks be to God, this church has shown that love to me. And I love you for it. And God loves you for it. And that same wonderful, accepting, welcoming Lord always has the last word because it's the best word. My sheep know my voice. They hear me and they follow me. The real Christ. As I said, he has the last word because he's a living Christ. We are Easter people. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our living Lord. Amen. Please stand as we continue with the prayer of the church. Today we want to remember... Um, about that bus that this morning turned over on I-95 and a lot of people ended up having to go to the hospital as it rolled over. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, gracious and wonderful Lord, we praise and thank you for the gift of your love, for your grace, for sending Jesus Christ as our Savior, giving us forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Lord, we praise you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that you have placed inside each of us, and particularly today for placing that spirit inside Adelie. Lord, we ask that you would look down upon all those in the world that long to know you, 
that don't have freedom in the places that they live to worship you, that you would open up hearts and minds of people and have them be able to spread your word in those places. Dear Lord, we ask that you look down upon the world leaders, that they lead countries and peoples, that they make decisions that are loving and righteous, that they take care of the people that they are charged with. Particularly, Lord, we ask that you look down upon those that are in Ukraine, that you would answer their prayers, that you would make peace come quickly, that you would be with all those families that have been displaced and separated because of the war. Dear Lord, be with them and have them draw close to you. Lord, we ask that you would look down upon the leaders of our own country, that they would make decisions that are honoring to you. Lord, look down upon those in our congregation that are hurting physically and mentally and spiritually. Open up our hearts and minds, our eyes and ears to see those in need. Use us as your tools, dear Lord, in their lives. Have us carry your word to those that don't know you. Dear Lord, look down upon the community of Harford County and have Bel Air know us as a light in that community. Have people know and see your actions of love through us and that they know St. Matthew as a place, as a place to come in times of need. Dear Heavenly Father, we look forward to that day when we will be in your presence with all of the saints. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and sent your only Son to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation won for us by the sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. In the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and bread from heaven to nourish your children. Send us forth as witnesses of Jesus' resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, this cup is the new covenant. It's the new promise for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We believe that this is Christ's true body and blood, and if you do too, you are welcome to our table. Please be seated.
drink these living waters. Sad and broken, peace unspoken, rest beside these living waters. Christ is calling, find refreshing at the cross of a living water. Lay your life down, all the old gone. Rise up in these living waters. There's a river that flows with mercy and love, bringing joy to the city of our God. There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore. Praise the Lord of living water. Spirit moving, mercy washing, healing in these living waters. Lead your children to the shoreline. Life is in these living waters. Cause there's a river that flows with mercy and love Bringing joy to the city of our God There our hope is secure, do not fear anymore Praise the Lord of living water true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith for life eternal. We pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Paul, next steps. Well, if I would say anything in light of what we've talked about today, we're thinking about our personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And to be aware 
that the enemy is after us to fool us, trick us, and to hold back the kingdom. And so if I had any challenge for each of us, myself included, to really affirm this week and search the scriptures and be in prayer about our authentic Christ and our relationship with him. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look down upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. No, don't give up. There is hope. There is always hope. Yeah. There is peace in the storm, in the storm. No, don't forget. He is Lord. He is Lord of all. Yes, yeah. Here we go. There is a king of glory. There is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty. Freedom is in his name. Hope in the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. So lift your eyes, stand in awe, stand in awe. Yes, there is one, only one, where my help comes from. the king of glory there is a god who saves one who is strong and mighty freedom is in his name hope in the gates of heaven and lift up a shout of praise there is a lion roaring jesus the king of glory Nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of oh, just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know. Nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of oh, just one name. Jesus reigns, I know, I know, I know, I know. One who is strong and mighty, freedom is in his name. Hope in the gates of heaven and lift up the shout of praise. There is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Cause there is a lion roaring, Jesus the King of glory. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know. Nations bow, mountains shake at the sound of just one name. Over all, Jesus reigns. I know, I know, I know, I know. Come on, hey. There is 
the king of glory, there is a God who saves, one who is strong and mighty, freedom is in his name. Hope in the gates of heaven, lift up a shout of praise, there is a lion roaring, Jesus the king of glory. Cause there is a lion roaring, Jesus the king of glory. 